Wherever humanity has lived, from whatever race or culture, there has been an overarching sense of the other. From time beyond knowing, there have been intimations of something vast and profound, something greater than the individual. That sense of the immeasurable has taken many forms through dance, through art, and the spoken or written word of the world's great religions. Expressions of awe and adoration have created an artistic and spiritual heritage which has rooted in every corner of the globe. A deep imprint has been stamped on the human mind. However great this cultural legacy may be, have these ancient myths and ongoing traditions prevented us from looking beyond the boundaries of our own preconceptions? Is there something beyond the books, the paintings, and sculpture? Is there something beyond the scope of thought? Krishnamurti on the sacred. Is there anything sacred in life, not invented by thought? Was man, from time immeasurable, he has always asked this question. Is there something beyond all this confusion, misery, darkness, illusions? beyond the institutions and re reforms? Is there something really true, something beyond time, something so immense that thought cannot come to it? Man has inquired all this into this. And only apparently very, 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 very few people have been free to enter into that world. And the priest from ancient of times comes in between the seeker and that which he's hoping to find. He interprets. He becomes the man who knows or help, thinks he knows. and is sidetracked, <coughs> diverted, lost. So if you want to inquire into that which is most holy, which is nameless and timeless, one must obviously belong to no group, <coughs> no religion have no belief, no faith, because belief and faith, belief is accepting as true something which does not or may not exist. That is the nature of belief taking for granted, accepting something to be true. When your own inquiry, your own vitality, energy is not found out, you believe. Because in belief there is some form of security, comfort. But a man who is seeking merely psychological comfort, such a man will never come upon that which is beyond time.
We ought to talk now about what is religion. Because religion has apparently, from the most ancient of days, has played an extraordinary part in life. Each civilization, however ancient, have their, their idea of religion, worshipping the sun, worshipping the trees, worshipping thunder, lightning, probably that's better than all the other things. From the most ancient days, man sought something beyond himself. And the priest comes along, he's like the rest of us. He says, I'll help you. He becomes the interpreter. Because he, in the ancient days, he was the, old, the priest was only the person who was capable of reading and writing. He interpreted that which he, he called God. And then he invented all the paraphernalia to make himself important. The robes, the mitre, you know, the whole circus. So we are asking, in spite of all the religions, with their nonsense, meaningless words and rituals, with their dogmas and superstitions, it's really a network of superstitions. Whether, well, in spite of all that, what is religion? I see pleasure, enjoyment, joy, and happiness. Mm -hmm. See, pleasure has not related to any of that, the other two, joy and enjoyment. So thought gives direction and sustains pleasure. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, I ask my mind, ask, can there be non-interference of thought, hmm? you know, yes. non-interference of thought in pleasure. I enjoy. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Why should thought come into it at all? There's no reason at all. But it does. It does. It does. It does. Therefore, how we now the question arises: How is the mind? the brain, to stop thought entering into that enjoyment. You yes. Not to interfere. Is it possible to enjoy, to take a delight in the most, in that lovely sea, and not thought creep in? Is this possible? I, you, I'll show you, it is possible, completely possible, if you are attentive at that moment, completely attentive. You follow, mm -hmm. sir? Which has nothing to do with screwing oneself up with muscular effort to focus in there. Uh, no, just, just be wholly yeah. there. 
When you see the sunset, see it completely. Mm. When you see a beautiful line of a car, mm -hmm. see it. And don't let this thought begin. That means, at that moment, be supremely attentive, completely, mm -hmm. with your mind, with your body, with your nerves, with your eyes, ears, everything attentive. Then thought doesn't come to you at all. To see the appetite, desire, to see the implication, the structure of pleasure, and it's no relation to, to enjoyment and to joy, to see all that, to see it, not verbally, but actually, mm -hmm. you know, uh, through, through observation, through attention, through care, through very careful um, seeing, that brings an extraordinary quality of intelligence. Mm -hmm. After all, intelligence is sensitivity, to be utterly sensitive, in seeing. If you call that intelligence the higher self or whatever, it has no meaning, you follow? It's as though you're saying, at that instant, it's released. Yeah. It, that intelligence comes in observation. Mm. Yes. And that intelligence is operating all the time, if you allow it. Not if you allow it. If you are seeing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I see, I have seen all my life, people who have controlled, people who have denied, people who have negated, um, who have sacrificed, who have controlled, um, suppressed um, furiously. Mm? Disciplined themselves, tortured themselves. And I said, For what? <laughs> For God? For truth? A mind that is made <laughs> tortured, crooked, brutalized? You, such a mind can see truth? Certainly not. You need a completely healthy mind. A mind that's whole, that's mind that is holy in itself. Otherwise, you can't see something whole, holy. Unless the mind is sacred, the you can't see what is sacred. When the mind is utterly silent, what is the immeasurable? You follow that? What is, what is the everlasting? What is the eternal? Not in terms of God and you know all these things man has invented. Actually, to to be that. I don't know. If I'm mm -hmm. Silence, in that deep sense of that word, 
opens the door. Because you've got there all your energy. Not a thing is wasted. There is no <coughs> dissipation of energy at all. Therefore, in that silence there is summation of energy. Precisely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not stimulated energy, not self-projected energy, and so on. So that's all too childish. There's because there is no conflict, no <coughs> control, no reaching out or not reaching, mm -hmm. searching, asking, questioning, demanding, waiting, praying, none of that. Therefore, there is tremendous, all that energy which has been wasted is now gathered in that silence. Mm -hmm. That silence has become sacred. Mm -hmm. Because obviously... Of course it has. It has not the sacred thing which thought has invented. No, not the sacred over against the profound. And, and, and all nope. that kind of stuff. No, nope. mm -hmm. no. Nope. So, it is the only such a sacred mind can see this, the most supreme sacred. The essence of all that is sacred, which is beautiful. You follow that? I do. So there it is. Mm -hmm. God isn't something that man has invented or created it out of his image and longing and failure. <coughs> but it, when the mind <coughs> itself becomes sacred, then it opens the door to something that is immeasurably sacred. That is religion. And that affects the daily living. The way I talk, the way I treat people, the kind of behavior, all that. <laughs> that is the religious life. If that doesn't exist, then every other mischief will exist. Oh, therefore, sir, all this comes to a sense of deep inward seriousness. And that seriousness itself brings about attention, care, and responsibility in all that we discuss. It isn't that one has gone through all this. One sees it. You know, and the very perception is action which is wisdom. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I must. I, I must express to you my. My gratitude from the bottom of my heart. I have, I hope you will let me, uh, because. Throughout the whole career of our discussions. I have been undergoing a transformation. Correct. Because you are willing enough to listen, good enough to listen. Most people are not, they won't listen. You took the time, the trouble, the care to listen. So they, we have untold energy. If that energy is 
not misused or wasted, and to find that which is sacred, one must have doubt. Because that doubt, scepticism, healthy scepticism, not that you can't doubt everything. But in the process of doubting, you clear the brain of all its stupidities, its superstitions, its illusions. So the, mind, the brain then becomes extraordinarily alive, subtle. So meditation is not controlling thought or practicing any some system or method, but freeing the mind from the brain, freeing the brain from its own conditioning. That's only the, the beginning of it. When there is that freedom, then we can inquire into what is a brain that is silent. Because it's only through great silence you learn, you observe, not when you're making a lot of noise. To observe those hills and these beautiful trees, to observe your wife and your children, or your husband and your relatives, or whatever they are, to observe, you must have space and there must be silence. But if you are chattering, gossiping, you know, you have no space or silence. And we need space, not only physically, but much more psychologically. That space is denied when we are thinking about ourselves. So simple, right? Because you, when there is space, vast space in psychologically, There's a great vitality, great energy. But when that space is limited to one's own little self, that vast energy is totally contained in it with its limitation. So that's why meditation is a pro is the ending of the self. So one can listen to all this. So one begins to realize when thought is quiet, watching, if there's something beyond all imagination, doubt, and seeking, and there is such thing, at least for the speaker. But what the speaker says has no validity to another, unless you listen, learn, watch, be totally free from all the anxieties of life. The ending of the self, the me, to be nothing, to have no image of any kind, no illusion, to be absolutely nothing. The tree is nothing to itself which exists, and in its very existence 
it is the most beautiful thing. Like those hills, they exist. They don't become something. You said, this is meditation. This is the ending of the search, and, and truth is. I've said enough.